What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word tribalism? I assume a regular person would think of racism, identity politics and maybe the inability to hear the other side. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the word tribalism has two prominent definitions, one of which is a combination of tribal consciousness and loyalty and the other is more simple and in a nutshell means a strong in-group loyalty. Both of these definitions are very interrelated and for a group royalty one needs a tribal consciousness and an understanding that they are a part of the tribe. A tribe that can be formed artificially just by dividing people into two categories as the experiment by Henry Tafel had suggested and it can be argued that it is a fully evolutionary inheritance without any cultural tendencies and moreover, recently scientists had identified a specific hormone called oxytocin that is responsible for a person's feelings of tribalism. They have concluded that it does not only promote in-group trust but also outward aggression. Similarly, Chinese scientists have concluded that oxytocin is also responsible for a racial bias, meaning the tested have showed greater empathy and in-group favoritism to their own race rather than a foreign race, which again isn't surprising to people who are somewhat familiar with science, as racial bias, unlike racial discrimination, is not socially constructed. In spite of that, what I do want to talk about today is contemporary tribalism in a neutral and in an unbiased way. And I will start off by saying that yes, everyone is tribalistic as it is an innate part of our human nature, experience and the experience of any other social animals. If you don't believe me and think that tribalism is instead socially constructed, here is a study that agrees with me and shows that literally no group is immune to it as well as individuals within the group. I, as a person who likes strategy games like Hearts of Iron and Civilization, will be tribally predisposed to people who also share my passions. Even when people are trying to find a common ground, they are searching for things that they both like or dislike, which again is a form of tribalism. Yes, even the common humanity can be argued is tribalistic, as the hormone that causes tribalism in the first place is also the hormone that causes common humanity, spirituality and connectedness. It is perfectly normal to relate to people with similar characteristics and life experiences as you are, not only because it is psychologically and evolutionarily beneficial to an individual and the group, but also because it is innate. There can be many criticisms of tribalism, but one that I'd like to talk about today often comes as a form of racial tribalism, as if other forms of tribalism do not exist. But nevertheless, the problem with that criticism is that it only falls on one racial group, while other racial groups' identities are on the other hand reinforced, often by the same people who decrease the racial identity of the former group. If you look at this graph, those same people have also managed to act in other racial groups' own interests. And I, and I had to remind him that he was a black person, so he can't vote for Donald Trump and that he shouldn't be influencing an entire swath of people who may listen to him. While at the same time accusing white conservatives of being racist, while white conservatives on the other hand are actually the least racially in-group biased people in America if we compare them to other races as it is compared on this graph. And the white liberals who are attacking white conservatives for racial bias are themselves biased but in the other direction. But you want to sit here and tell me that you're educated enough to make demands about sh you know nothing about. Yeah. You should know better. You should know better. Traitor. Traitor to your f people. <laughs> you're like the f black Judas. Selling Christ. 
And if you look at this from an evolutionary group selection perspective, it is a terrible strategy for them to take. And on top of that, they also happen to be tribalistic in their political ways compared to Republicans, with 71% of them not being willing to date a Trump supporter compared to 47% of Republicans who are not willing to date Hillary Clinton supporters. The same survey has reported that 45% of Democrats would strongly reject a Trump voter, while only 19% of Republicans would strongly reject a Hillary Clinton voter. Maybe it is their suppression of the racial tribalism that has caused them to be more tribalistic in other areas. And judging from my own interactions with white liberals tells me that even a mixed expression of disagreement with them can set many of them off to a point where they can cut all social connections with you. Now, I'm not simply here to attack tribalism because it's a rather mixed bag of good and bad things, but to point out the hypocrisy that white liberals are only attacking the vital forms of tribalism while they reinforce racial tribalism in other racial groups, as well as liberals themselves are pretty politically tribal. The main issue I have with them is that tribalism per se is not under attack, but it is often encouraged depends on the group being tribal. And in addition to that, those attacks seem to be pretty hypocritical when they are coming from a very tribalistic group themselves. I would like to close this video by showing one interesting study from 2003 which had found that in the realm of politics, actual policy is less important than tribal affiliation. The researchers had gathered liberals and conservatives, divided them into two groups and gave them two sets of policies. One that is aligned with their ideology and the other is not aligned with their ideology but is supported by their party. And what do you think? Yes, group loyalty won over ideology and liberal participants strongly favored a stringent policy approved by the Democrats, while conservative participants favored generous policy approved by the Republicans. For those of you who are not familiar with American politics, Republicans are the ones that tend to be stringent, while Democrats tend to be generous in their social policies. But unfortunately, it doesn't really matter as much as tribal identity as they have concluded, and pretty much it could be said that in contemporary politics, policies come secondary to echo chambers. And honestly, I think that political tribalism is pretty stupid. Because no one ideology could provide all the answers and political pluralism is a necessity in a liberal democracy, but I do not dismiss the other usefulness of tribalism and I even enjoy it, as do people of color whom the white liberals like to worship and validate. Maybe one day I hope that white liberals extend their equal treatment and validation to non-liberal whites as they have extended it to people of color and understand that in-group favoritism and ability to relate is an intrinsic part of our human experience, which does not only exist in sport, music and favorite novels.